one thing I forgot to ask you, Julie, is how do I properly pronounce your last name? Oh, it's a good question. It's just like Riesling, Riesler. <laughs> Riesler? Riesler, like you like a Riesling. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. So welcome back to the show, everybody. Today, I'm getting to chat with Julie Riesler. She is an interior designer for your soul. How fantastic does that sound? She's a mentor to hundreds of coaches, change makers, and soulful entrepreneurs. Julie is the host of the Uist You podcast and author of Get a PhD in You. Julie has been featured in Forbes, Mind Body Green, the Chopra Center, Bustle, and Thrive Global for her work as a coach, teacher, and conscious business leader. Julie holds a master's degree in health and wellness coaching from the Maryland University of Integrative Health and is a professor at Georgetown University. Julie is the founder of the Life Designer Coach Academy, a leading edge program where she certifies life coaches from all over the world. Welcome to the podcast, Julie. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here with you. I've been thinking about it like all week. So thank you for having me. Me too. There's so many different topics that I wanted to connect with you on and chat about with you today. We're going to try to focus on overcoming money blocks. But first, tell me, tell me a little bit about your life coaching focus. What brings people to you? What type of life coaching skills are people reaching out to you for? Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. If it's okay, I'll do like a tiny bit of like backstory. Cause it's, it's important for me how I even like, you know, found myself in this, in this, in this work. Um, I'll do, I'll, I'll do the, uh, the quick version. I, you know, it's interesting in college. Like I wasn't sure, you know, many of us do our majors if we even go to college. Right. And I was like, all right, psychology, public health. I didn't want to be a therapist. I did not know about the field of coaching. This was quite a long time ago. <laughs> so I just knew I love the idea of helping people. Went through my own dark night of the soul uh, in crisis, both health, health uh, related and in my own relationship being in a marriage that just, it didn't fit, even though it was a good person. Um, and those two things together, I, it really brought me to a place of um, surrender. And I did a lot of deep inner work through many different avenues, everything from therapy and support systems, support groups, and a very powerful professional, uh, personal development program where I was, uh, had a coach. And that coach literally helped me with, with, with all of the coaching, specifically though with one question, like changed my perspective, changed my life. And I remember this 15 years ago thinking, oh my gosh, if this, if the way that this has changed my life, what if I could do that to help other people? So while I was working full time at the time, single mom, I worked um, actually for Panera Bread. I was head of recruiting. Um, so in the food industry, I was their head recruiter, the largest franchise in the country, um, grown from 11 to 65 units. Um, HR, I did leadership. I loved it. I would say I liked it a lot. Um, but I was like, I'm fire about this, this transformation. So I went back and got my master's degree in health and wellness coaching with actually a, um, focus in nutrition. And I loved this school because it was all integrative based. And I just, you know, through having a practicum and coaching people, I had to do that to pass and to, and to, to, you know, be able to move forward. And I realized, oh my gosh, I love this work. And I started having clients while I was working full time as a single mom. And I just, my, and I'm very big into, you know, you follow your inner guidance and my inner guidance was like, Julie, you've got to do this. And so this is almost nine years ago. I left, uh, to start my own business. I started from scratch, Whitney, like zero. And you know, it's just before coaching was what it is today. So I had a lot of people that were like, are you coaching like women in soccer? Like, what are you coaching? <laughs> what are you doing? And it has just grown and taken off. I, still teach at Georgetown University in their health and wellness coaching program. And I, the beginning of the pandemic was really called to help teach this in a way that was accessible to anyone anywhere in the world. And I started my own uh, life coach certification program. I've been teaching it for years. And, um, you know, it's very interesting. I've had a lot of people come in, mainly women, some men, who've come in as therapists, who've come in lawyers, um, physicians. Um, I've had a lot of coaches 
that have already done other programs, but I think really wanted that integrative holistic approach as well. And, um, you know, I do a lot, I've been trained and certified in other modalities, healing modalities around your energy, around positive psychology, and could go into that as well. You know, how to, um, really how to help somebody see their strengths and gifts come from that generative lens versus that, you know, what we tend to do is kind of like, where do I suck? Why does this suck? How do I change that versus what's working well? What is within me that I know is meant to flourish? So anyhow, it's, it's, it's been a journey. Um, I have built this whole thing from, you know, inner guidance and, and a passion to really, God, I mean, I was at a place where I didn't want to live anymore and everything looked really great on the outside. And I just want to say, you know, that whole, like, everything looks great and smiling doesn't mean that that's what's going on in the inside. And so today I'm grateful. You know, I just feel like life is aligned and um, imperfect and able to just, you know, teach and use and work with a modality, with a healing practice that is life-changing. It's, um, you know, a definition of miracles is a shift in per percep perception and perspective. And that is what I've seen with coaching. So really long answer to your question, but I hope that gave a sense. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And it sounds like a lot of people come to you because their day-to-day -day life isn't lighting them up anymore. And they don't know how to make a change to spend more time doing the things that make them happy or find the spark to make them happy. Would you say that's mm. a lot of what your clients are looking for when they come to you? It's such a good reflection and question and, and point. Yeah. I would say, you know, kind of what I'd said earlier, I have a lot of very high achieving, ambitious, tends to be a lot of women, sometimes men driven that feel like, wait a minute, I, I, I have all the things and something is missing. Like the light is not on and I don't know why. Like life is fine and I'm putting air quotes, <laughs> um, but it does not feel like it's fully you know, I'm fully expressed here. And I do have a lot of entrepreneurs that come in. So it might be, you know, how do I express in my business? It might be, I want to start something. It might be like, I'm just feeling kind of blah, like it, it's nothing's wrong per se, but I'm not feeling lit up. And I'm just a big believer. We did not come to the planet to just do fine. I mean, I didn't, I don't know. I, I know you did, you know, like there's, and, you know, that, that great quote, it's like where you have gifts and strengths and that unique something that is, that is literally only expressing as you, because there's only one of you ever, you know, there's an intersection of what's needed in the world. And I really believe when you tune into that and you get to really what lights you up, watch what happens. This is what I've seen in my own life. I've seen with many, many clients and, and often those that are, that are used to getting, um, goals achieved by pushing and, and being driven and often there's something missing in that equation. And that's where I love to come in and help like, all right, what's happening. Let's, let's look at life from a, from a holistic perspective because there is a way for you to fall in love with yourself and your life. I know it. I've seen it. Yeah. So one of the questions I was going to ask you today is, you know, why oftentimes do they say that follow what lights you up? Cause the money will come from there. Like what is happening there that when we get really excited about little projects that we do, um, hobbies that we do, if we follow that, that can be a source of financial abundance. I am laughing inside because literally last night on the phone with my daughter, who's going to be 17 and she's actually interested in the whole functional nutrition world. And she was like, I'm so interested, but can you make money doing that? And I'm like, listen hold on. <laughs> Do not go, uh, don't worry about money first. And I just literally said, we need to find what lights you the F up. What feels like you would do this for free, what you would, you know, would, would, you would wake up at four in the morning to go do this because you feel so on fire about it. So I'm laughing because literally I had that conversation <laughs> last night with her and I look, we know, and I, I will take sort of a, um, you know, a, a more of an energetic perspective here, but we are all energy. We are made of energy. Everything is when you are aligned with your own inner tr truth and what is joyful and passionate and motivating for you. And that's going to vary per person. 
to me, what I have seen personally from literally doing this business with no background, I mean, no business background, nothing other than I am on fire about, I want to help people. And I do think I would add, Whitney, the thing I would add is, you know, I think there's an element of you add what lights you up and how can this be of service for the greater good of others? You add that to the equation we can talk about money all day long. Watch what happens. Watch how the universe is going to open up doors you didn't even know existed to help you to help others. So I think it's both a combination of what lights you up, meaning, you know, where do you lean in? Where do you feel energized? Where do you feel alive? Where do you feel most passionate? And where do you feel like I am here and I want to, I'm here to help in this way? I, you know, there's a lot of issues and things going on in the world, can't solve it all. What's mine to do and to be? And when you put those together, it's an unstoppable combination. That's what I've seen with, I mean, I've coached hundreds of people and my own self. Um, so I think it's both the what lights you up and where can I bring this to, to help others? And, you know, that can vary from all of us, but that being of service to me is got to be the, it's got to be married to that question of what lights you up. So that reminds me of one of my first kind of spiritual teachers shared with me that you have to have discernment on what your name's on. So once you realize your name's on that, then you can go all in. And she always would share the analogy of back in the early 2000s when everyone was becoming a certified yoga teacher, but not everyone's name was on being a yoga teacher. You know, you have to have discernment on what is for you and then go for it full force. And then I love your, I love the way you phrase that is then now that you figured out the passion, what within the passion are you great at that you can teach and share with others? And yes. then naturally the way that you can live within that and create a business from it is born. It's, it's, um, I love how you just phrase that. And you know what I'm, what comes to mind is that often we get so into like, how do I make money doing this? The how the, yes. you know, the, um, yeah, really into that, that how piece and what's often missing. I mean, this is, this is, you know, part of Simon Sinek's work, uh, with starting with why, right. You go to the why first. Um, I love what you said. I haven't heard it said that way. And I love that. Like not everything has our name on it. And that, that is so important, especially for those of us. And I'll, I'll say I'm, you know, multi-passionate, probably multi-talented and have this thing where I'm like, I could do that. I could do that. I would love that. That would be fun. And it's like, okay, you might need to do a little of that sorting until you realize, you know what? And it's funny. I used to, um, I was a personal trainer. I taught Pilates and, and, and um, bar and yoga. And I realized, you know what? I love the art of that, but it's actually like, it doesn't have my name on it. Um, it was great in the beginning. It kind of got me out there, but that wasn't really, it, it, it's something I love to do myself, but I realized kind of like the yoga teacher. I'm like, nope, that's, that doesn't have my name on it, but you know, maybe it's like starting your own food company, becoming, <laughs> you know, becoming a coach, uh, becoming a feng shui expert, um, be, becoming an expert in ecology or farming or whatever it is, you know, I, I just think that whole getting that watching out to see what others are doing and not comparing yourself and getting that it's not all going to have your name on it. I love how you said that. I think that is so spot on. For people that are listening and maybe you have clients that have been in the situation where they're in a career and they've reached a financial plateau, no matter what that number is. And they can't seem to find a way to increase their salary. And they know they need to increase their salary simply to be able to maybe afford their life or be able to afford to do other things in life that they want to experience. How do you coach someone who feel like, feels like they're in a career plateau? So it's a great question. I am a very, very, very big believer that everything on the outer, in the outer world and our exterior is going to be mirroring what is going on the interior and in, inside. So, you know, said simply, which I'm sure you, this is not new, right? Your, your thoughts, what you're thinking about, what you're saying to yourself about yourself, what you're believing, the, the, you know, the, um, 
the glass ceiling you might be putting on yourself, all of that ne- really needs to be looked at. Um, even though it looks like, okay, I hit a ceiling, I want to make more money. What I would absolutely go into first is what are the beliefs around money, around you, around worthiness, around, you know, what did you see growing up? What are you, you know, used to seeing? What are you, what are your expectations? We often have these inner kind of unconscious expectations of ourselves. And I mean, I've just lived this enough where it might look like, need to make more money, like it's at a plateau and under it is often, you know what, I hit a ceiling with my ability to see myself, to do and be more. And so I'm also a believer how we do one thing is how we do everything. So where am I doing that in other parts of my life? So that's that's where I think coaching, you know, that's at least for me, it's been really powerful. And and having a coach myself too is to really look at, okay, what what is the underbelly of that of that problem before I go try to just, now there are things you can do, of course, like, okay, let's brainstorm. Are there other ways to bring in other income, passive income, you know, always looking from how can I also be of service while I'm doing this? Um, I just, what I have found is that usually the, the underpinning is going to be, what are you really believing within yourself as it relates to your job, your career, your, your, worthiness, your abilities, money, all of it. And that, that is important to look at for sure. You're such a great life coach to be talking to about money and, and your career, considering you were an HR manager. So you've seen the other side. So you can really coach people through the corporate navigation of getting hired and your worth. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you for, I, I, I don't know that I put that together until this moment. It's funny. I did, I do have a large, long corporate background, which is so fascinating because I'm not in that today, but yeah, there's a, there's an understanding for sure of that. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are quick these days to poo poo traditional corporate careers, but you learn so much from that structure yeah. That allows you to then to create your own structure if you want to be an entrepreneur, but it gives you the fluidity to bounce back and forth between both worlds. And, yeah. you know, you, you know, you can't have one thing without the other, the yin and yang. So you, you yeah. better know how to operate within both parties. Yeah. Can I add one quick thing to that also? Yeah. And that is also what I've seen is not everybody is cut out or interested in being an entrepreneur. And that's fine. That's great. Like, to be honest, um, you know, I, I actually like having a foot in the corporate environment. I don't know if you'd call, you know, Georgetown is a university. There's, it's very different <laughs> working for myself. Like even when I'm coaching and teaching, it's very, there's a lot of, um, you know, certain things you have to do that are, it's just, it's, it's, it's run like a, you know, in some ways um, there's a corporate aspect to it. And so you know, it, wherever you are, and I know I've, I've had friends that have tried entrepreneurship and dabbled and it's like, it just wasn't them. And so, or you can do both or you can, I do think corporate though, that experience, I mean, I'm grateful. I had 20 years in a corporate environment before going on my own. And, you know, I also, I, I, I there's no, uh, what I learned is, is priceless from that experience. I second that. Um, so if you're coaching somebody one-on-one to help them reach their dream financial number, whether that's just general overall income, they dream of hitting a certain number, or they're trying to hit a certain number with their actual salary, what are the daily habits you maybe have your client do to get there Yeah, and create that opportunity maybe to then have that financial number? So you're, this is like the perfect way to ask this. And, you know, one of the things with coaching that I think is often misunderstood, I am always co-creating with my clients rather than just giving advice or telling them what to do. However, what I've seen, because I just seem to attract driven, <laughs> vicious, goal-getting, mainly women, um, is there are definite habits that, um, it, and they revolve around self-compassion, self-care, call it self-love, um, whatever words work for you and that, that I see are just crucial and, and really like making that an integrated part of your, of, of, of your routine and taking care of yourself. So 
you know, in terms of you might come with the goal to make, you know, I want to make six figures. I want to make seven figures in my business. Um, one of the things I like to look at is, well, who do you, who do you, first of all, why, why is that important? Like, what's that, what are you thinking is going to be the difference in how you feel now versus then? I can tell you right now, <laughs> the more you grow, the more you have to manage, right? And um, it's awesome to make more money. It's wonderful to have that abundance. And let's get to what are you, what do you, how do you really want to feel? Like, what is it you're looking for? Because sometimes it is, it is to make more money. And sometimes it's also, you know what, I want to feel um, more stability and more secure. Okay, let's look at, well, how do you feel more secure and stable now, Bef you know, as you're on the road to making that money? So I like to look at like, what's underneath that? Why is that important to you? Why is that goal important? What does that mean for you? What is that um, going to afford you? What like kind of get under it a little bit in terms of those habits and ways of being, you know, the way I think of it is abundance is abundance, right? So if I'm, if I have one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake in my life, like I'm doing all the things and going to the gym and I'm meditating in the morning, but I'm feeling crappy about myself or not worthy it's one foot on the gas, one on the brake. There's, there's, uh, there's a lack of flow in how you're being. So one of the first things I like to look at is how are you really, truly loving up, taking care of who you are exactly as you are right now? Not from fear, not from not good enough, but from like legit worthiness, compassion, um, honoring yourself. And then we look at what are ways to honor yourself. And that's different for everyone. I mean, I come from the background of, you know, my, my program was an integrated program. So eating, you know, really in a healthy, um, getting as much nutrient dense food that comes in the real form. I know you're all, into that. you know, I, uh, as someone who has a thyroid condition, I've been very into the autoimmune protocol. So, you know, just looking at what are nutrients. And I usually, we talk about nutrients in the food, nutrients in your movement. What, you know, are those thoughts nutrient rich? So I actually like to look at how are you nourishing yourself? Mm -hmm. Not just like what you're ingesting, but what are you saying to yourself? How are you being to yourself? How are you, if you are moving, I'll give you an example. You know, I was very into hit method, uh, working out for a while. Well, I've hit you know, this normal, didn't realize the whole perimenopause experience. Let me tell you, that's something special. And my body does not want to be doing a lot of hit method right now. And I've been doing a lot of research on it. So I had a switch, like the way to nourish myself is to, to, to change that up and to do more like longer walks, um, still adding weights, but just to change the way I'm nourishing myself with movement. And I think honoring our energy nourishing ourselves in all aspects, um, nourishing your mind, making sure are you, what are you watching? Like, what are the things you're listening to? Breathing, meditating, all of these basics, so important. And I think, you know, nourishment is really the key. It's just, it's not, it's not just food. It's all, you know, all aspects. To me, what I have seen is when we are doing that, we are able to bring in more flow, more flow of energy, more flow of abundance, more flow of opportunities, of blessings, and, and, and money, which is also an energy, you know, in currency form. Um, so I do take an integrative approach, and everybody is different, yet I see the similar, like, we got to look at where the blocks are. Where are you hindering your flow? If or when you work with clients about how they're fueling their body, what tends to be their pain point? Is it breakfast, lunch, or dinner? What are they, where are they making the excuse that they have to eat fast food or just grab something? Um, yeah. And then how do you coach them through making that shift? Yeah, and it's so interesting. This, you know, I was telling a very dear friend, I, I said the other day, I was like, I sometimes forget I have legit like health and wellness degree. I'm national board certified. And I'm like, I actually could be, do like, I, I, let me say this, it comes up many of the people that I've, that I have worked with are typically like very careful about what they're eating. However, I'll tell you, there was an example. I worked with a woman about two years ago. Um, and for her, it was really breakfast and lunch because she had two children. She had two children that, um, she was a single mom 
and getting them off to school. She worked at home. She always had somehow the time, like time in the, the evening to make dinner, but that lunch and breakfast was really rough. And, you know, no judgment. I remember hearing what she was eating and I'm like, okay, <laughs> tell me on a scale of one to 10, how nourishing you feel, how, how nourishing that feels for you after you're done eating it. And she was like, I feel awful. Like her energy would tank, you know, 30 minutes after. I know I'm like, okay, we let's like, and we actually looked at it through the lens of if your body could speak to you, what do you think she would ask for? What does she need to feel loved? I, I like taking that approach because it's not about, sure, you want to look good, you want to feel good, but like, let's look at how do we, how do we honor this you know, the vessel you're living in, like it's, it's here temporarily, you know, and it's, you get one of them. So that was really a transformative moment for her. She started crying. She's like, Oh my God, it's like, I'm not putting gas in my car and I'm making my car try to run on like no gas. And she just saw it. She got it. She's like, I am not loving myself by eating this way. And we came up with a whole plan for her what to do. Um, it was a big change. She did release weight that she wanted to release. More importantly, though, what shifted was her sense of loving herself and feeling, you know, when you're caring for yourself by eating something really like delicious and healthy and nourishing. Like I know for me, I always feel like, ooh, I love taking care of me. It feels good, right? You're saying I do care about you. Um, it makes me want to cry talking about this. I don't know why. It's just emotional. I think when I see others not loving on themselves, especially with food, I'm like, okay, we got to, let, let's look at this because you deserve to be well-loved and well-nourished um, at all times. And even if, even if, you know, that means even if, if funds are tighter, let's look at how we can do this. You know, how can we do this anyhow? Or if time is tight, right? It's usually, frankly, the time issue mm -hmm. um, or, the, or the prioritizing. And all of those are things to look at because to me, they're all indications of a lack of really honoring and loving yourself. I think we can all relate to that story because we've all had a time in our adult lives where we've prioritized getting to work or being in business meetings or showing face or, you know, basically worrying about other people's happiness or perception of us or showing up for others versus taking a moment to take care of ourselves. And maybe that way of taking care of ourselves required that we take a few extra moments and prepared a good meal and sat down and ate it properly. Um, and then that moment when we realize that we're our own detriment to ourselves, it's yeah. tough. It's so tough. It's so real. The, the like next level of this, I, I was trained in a mindful eating program and this is something as like a person who frankly, like I've always worked on, I, I eat very fast. I'm tr well, I shouldn't say that today cause I've definitely been <laughs> working on it. Um, you know, really the next level would then be, okay, how do I like really, how am I present with this food and bless it and, and honor where it's come from and frankly tune into the energetics, the vibration, the, you know, the, the, the good, um, the nutrients that all the people that have been involved to help me to have this beautiful salad or, you know, I'm laughing. I, before we met, I mean, I made a, a smoothie. It's actually, I don't have smoothies every day, but it's got a lot of lovely things in there. And I was just thinking, oh my God, like, look at you cute blueberries. I just saw one of you pop to the top because I didn't fully blend it because I didn't want to be late, you know? And it's like, let me just honor, there's some good, beautiful things in here. And I want to, that that's the next level is you know really honoring setting intention blessing your your food um i'm a big believer there's a book called the intention experiment i've actually interviewed lynn mctaggart it's incredibly powerful and it talks about our intention that we have way more sovereignty and agency than we understand so you set the intention of caring and nourishing for yourself then you set the intention that this food is going to bless every cell i mean you could get as deep as you want um, I don't always remember to do this. I got to be honest, when I'm driving my kids to school, usually it's, you know, if I'm eating something right after or on the way, you know, I try to take a breath. I try to do some sort of, let me just honor, let me just bless it. Um, sometimes it, it's quick, but I will say there's something that shifts when you start to have a new presence and appreciation of what you are literally fueling, feeding your cells with, your, your organs, your, you know, these aspects of our body, um, 
and I've led meditations and I try to do this myself, we don't often think about your kidneys, your heart, your, your digestion, your, you know, your beautiful lungs, like your capillary. I mean, there's just so much going on that's miraculous that is feeding off what we feed ourselves. And so it's helped. I know the clients I've worked with and myself, it's helped to kind of elevate, um, to make it more sacred because it can seem, it can feel very mundane and it doesn't have to be. I love that. And I love that we're on the same wavelength. I look forward to having a meal with you sometime and, um, it will be a great meal when we finally get to get to meet in person. But I, I really loved what you just shared. And so to kind of piggyback off that, I'd love to know more about your morning and evening routine that you've created for yourself right now. Cause I'm sure it's always changing. Um, so can you walk me through kind of your day and the things that you do for yourself now that really makes the difference in yeah. you know, living a life that makes you happy? Yeah. I'm just going to say it's a little bit of a long list. I hope I don't freak anyone out. This is just, and some days it shifts, but this, this is what works for me. So I'll, I'll say what happened this morning, for example. And this is what I love. Like, like the Gemini gossiper in me, I just love hearing different people's routines and then you can take what you want and incorporate in yours or take nothing from it. But yeah. it's so, I think it's so fun to find out what other people are doing and what works for them. So oh, share, it. It, share it all. I'm here for it. It's a lot. I love that. I know I'm a Gemini South node Sagittarius, right? So I'm, I got you on the whole. I'm like, yep. I love, I love hearing these things too. So for me and I, <laughs> I tend to be the, like, just do a lot, like have a lot. I like, so my practice, I'll, I'll go with this morning. Um, I started this morning, I slept okay, not great. So I knew right away I, I wanted to do a yoga nidra, which normally I would do in the evening, but it's a, it's um you laying down and it really gets you in your body. And I woke up feeling like a little agitated. So I, I use insight timer. I actually have a lot of meditations up there as well. There's amazing teachers. I found a yoga nidra and I actually did my Reiki practice. So there's eight hand positions, they're energetic based. And I did that while listening to the yoga nidra and it really helped me to, to ground. I usually start with Reiki. Um, and if you don't know Reiki, the one position that always, I think is universal is your hands on your heart and you just, I go to bed that way and I wake up that way. Um, I, after that, I just laughing. It's, it's a lot. I, um, I have a couple different journals. I have a daily reader. So I start with prayer and connecting in for me. It's just, I think of it as plugging in, you know, if you vacuum the rug and you don't plug it in, it sucks. You don't really, it doesn't work. So I think of myself as I need to plug myself into the wall <laughs> before I start my day. So I start with, I have a couple different you know, prayer, universal prayers that help me to really, and I really try to feel this greater intelligence, this greater force, uh, God force. And then I read the daily reader and I do a little journaling on it, just short. And I've actually like only allow myself a couple sentences because then it, I will do it. Um, I have a gratitude journal where I'm also just tracking, by the way, the things I'm tracking for the week are things like, did I meditate? Did I take myself on a date? So like loving things. So I do a little, like a quick little gratitude. Um, and then I have a book that is like inspirational wisdom and I'll just open it to whatever page. I, I don't read it like a normal human being. I open it and assume that's what I'm supposed to read. I read that page. Um, I'm trying to think. And then often what I will do is we'll pull, I have a deck of cards that, that I created. Um, I usually have these, these intention cards and I'll just pull a card and then I'll, I'll show you guys. I put it on here. So I have a little like stand for it. I love that. I love to just be guided. Then I, <laughs> I will get my, I have my supplements and my things that I take. And I usually do some sort of, um, lemon ginger, something that's going to be refreshing and that is uh, detoxing, um, that I, drink and then I walk, bike, gym, exercise, something right after that. So that's like non-negotiable most mornings. Um, and then I'm, you know, I'm working through, if you've heard of A Course in Miracles, I'm working through that right now. I'm on 44. So, you know, I will listen to that while I'm walking or, or, and then evening time. So I'll fast forward to the evening. 
I've been starting a new practice. I have an infrared sauna, and I've been using that almost every evening. And I'll listen again to that course for the day um, or a podcast or something inspirational. And I have a couple different channels for that. And then my husband and I listen to the course together, and we take notes um, and usually share like appreciations with each other, like what we appreciated about ourselves, about the day, about one another. Um, and then when I go to bed, I just, I try to really feel into what I'm grateful for and how I want to wake up. So I think that gives a typical day. And of course, like eating, I try to eat as well as I can and I do all of that. Yeah. What a beautiful day. That sounds <laughs> lovely. Meditation, sometimes in there, sometimes in the sauna. I try to fit that in when I can. But yeah, it's just, that's what works. You know, I, um, and on the weekends, I kind of expand it. I give myself more time to journal, more time. Uh, I have a support group I'm still a part of that I do a, a meeting a week, um, just around general relationships and self-care and self-love. Um, and I have my own coach. I always have my own coach too, Whitney, um, that I work with. And I, and I do work with a functional nutrition expert, especially as hormones are shifting. So, you know, I have a team. I just don't believe that we're here to do life alone. And, you know, however you can connect into something greater, to me, it helps me remember, like, I'm here to be of service. I, I, I just posted this. I really live by this. You know, I think of the universe, the divine is my guide, is my director, is my employer. That's who I'm working for. That's who I'm connecting to. And that just helps me get out of my ego and shit. <laughs> How does a coach find a coach? Mm, good question. So I think what I have seen, it's interesting, right? I, I'm listed on different sites, but what I've seen both in finding clients and then finding coaches, often I think it's through, it's through word of mouth. It's through mm -hmm. testimonials. It's through, you know, if you've worked with somebody, um, and they had a great experience, often they're going to share it with their friends and vice versa. Like people that I trust, I'll say like, have you worked with any coaches that you love? And I love, love, love to, I always have somebody I'm that I'm, I'm working with. I believe in this work and I've always had a coach since day one. And it's often through people, you know, that I trust and know that are, you know, have, have shared, I've worked with this coach. You should, you should try it. And so I think the word of mouth is huge relationships. Um, having really real authentic relationships and, and just being off, you know, being, being an in integrity with who you are. And when you help others shift their life and perspective and, and, and yes, re reach their goals, but change the way they feel inside and life starts to change. Don't worry. You will have clients come find you. I can just tell you that. If someone is thinking about finding a life coach, or a coach in general, do they have to know what they need support with? Or do they just need to know that they're in a space where they, they want to make a shift and they want someone to hold them accountable to help them find and make that shift? Yeah. It's a great question. What just came, I just thought uh, visually, one of the things I teach is when you are looking for clients, there's what's known as the stages of change. I think it's like Prochaska who created this and there's different in that cycle, there are different aspects of where you are in the readiness for change. So if you, if you're not even thinking about it, then you're, 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 you're not going to even think about it. If you're in that kind of pre-contemplation, what I would say is you want to make sure that you are willing, open to, to going deeper, to being vulnerable to, I mean, what I would say is any really great trained coach. Um, they'll go as deep as you want to go. However, if you're, what I have experienced, what I teach and what I have seen is, you know, part of coaching is it's this wide open, safe space to really go in areas you may not have looked at before to, to find parts of yourself you didn't even realize wanted to be expressed. But to do that, A, there's got to be trust and safety. There's also got to be vulnerability and the willingness to be open and to go there. So I would ask myself, am I really willing and ready? If the answer is no, that's fine. You know, it, it might be not now, not yet. Um, if, you know, look, when you are sick and tired of being sick and tired or you're overwhelmed or you're had enough of, like I, what I say is I had enough of myself. Like I've had enough of this. Like I'm, when you're there, 
that's a good place to be. And then I would really, you know, of course you can Google, you can look it up. I, I typically, um, I typically go to people that I know. I mean, at this point, just because I'm in this field, I know a ton of coaches. I have over 80 coaches I've certified. I mean, obviously I still coach people. I tend to know people in the field that do it. Um, the one thing I would ask though, is, you know, somebody that's really trained, it's not about them necessarily just telling you what to do, giving you answers that might come into it, but it's really about, you're going to, the reason it works is that you learn and discover who you are and the, the, the expertise and the insights and answers are really are within. And what happens is when you get that feeling, you, you experience that firsthand, that's what raises confidence and worthiness. So, um, it's kind of like teaching someone to fish versus giving them the fish. We want to, you know, there's, there's a co-creation aspect, but yeah, you gotta, you just gotta make sure you're really open and willing because it is, uh, it's a transformative modality. It's all I can tell you. It changed my whole life. It really did. Do you check in with your coach just once a week or a few times a week? So as the coach, when I'm coaching somebody, it really depends. Sometimes we meet every two weeks, sometimes it's every week, and sometimes it's even every three weeks. I, if I'm taking somebody on, I always make it very clear they are welcome to connect with me. I am very clear about, you know, I used to say like anytime and I was like, it has to actually be Monday, Friday, like nine to five. This is the boundary. Um, and I love it. I love it when my clients check in. I love it when they send something, when they email, when they check in, I want to hear what's happening. That's me. That's, that's how I do it. Not everyone's like that. Um, and I, the coach, uh, that I've been working with, I definitely, you know, check in with her. Um, and it's worked really well. It's worked really well to do that. Well, as a professor and someone that's on campus at Georgetown, what do you see people really interested in, in the health and wellness scene right now? Yeah. So it's interesting because this, this is like mostly adult students that are coming mm -hmm. back to get their, their, um, you know, the certificate in, in coaching and health and wellness. And first of all, I'm seeing a lot more students that are interested in taking this work into the corporate arena, not just, uh, entrepreneurial. Um, which, and, and the other piece that's really cool, what I think we're going to be doing soon is bringing in health professionals that want to get trained physicians that want this training, which is huge. Um, uh, I love my physicians, right? I know I have many friends that are many were not taught right about from this integrative approach, right? Especially about nutrition, about health, but also like, how do you look at the problem or the issue or the concern from kind of a whole person perspective? Um, that's what I love. Georgetown is all about that care of personalis, that, that whole person perspective. But I'm definitely seeing, first of all, I'm also seeing another trend is a lot more hiring of health and wellness coaches in corporations, in companies, in health and wellness um, organizations, a need for that, which is amazing. And I'm seeing more people interested to go into corporate. And then I'm, I am seeing uh, physicians and even therapists coming through uh, to get certified, to be able to use these skills. That's so exciting. And that's so great for the people yeah. that are going to be working at those businesses and in, in that community. So true. Anything that you are following right now, learning about, seeing on social media that you're really into? Oh my gosh. My brain just did like a pan of like, I'm like, oh, there's so much. Where do I begin? Well, I think, goodness, there's so many ways to answer that. I will share, I just, I read a book um, that I found to be so powerful and, and life-changing and it's really the power of our, our breath. Uh, the name is called Breath <laughs> uh, by James Nestor. And he, you know, he goes into um, so much science and so much depth about the importance of really getting, of how we're breathing and how that affects everything, health, well-being, energy. Um, I had done a whole program in mindfulness and meditation and breathing. I've done a lot with um Heart Math Institute, Heart Intelligence, which I'm hugely into, which is all about this fact that we actually have like legit sensory neurites in our heart. We have intelligence in our heart, like in our brain. Um, the thing that connects everything is breathing is, you know, what keeps us here alive is our breath. And 
um, just that has been really powerful. I, I don't know if I'm seeing it all over social media necessarily, but like what I'm seeing is a trend in a great way towards really honoring and learning how to use breath to heal. Um, and to, and, and for performance, I am working with an Olympian athlete right now. Who's just amazing. And she and I were just talking about this. It's been life changing for her to literally be able to use this breath work and breath to not just in her, you know, not just in the, in athleticism, but in her life. And I I believe what I love about that is we all are breathing. (laughs) You're watching, listening, you're breathing, I hope, um, and this is something when you learn the different ways to breathe, like truly the count in and exhale, like there's, there's science to it. It's, um, it's life changing. So I've been using that myself. It's been very healing for my own health and well being. Well, where can people learn more about you, connect with you, work with you? Where are all the places they can go? Yeah. So I think the best, the home, the home space is my, uh, home away from home on the internet would be my website, which is just julie Um, you certainly can find me also on Instagram, Facebook. If you just look up Julie Riesler, I do have actually a ton of resources, meditations, a couple courses, um, some of my top podcast interviews that really are with experts that are going to help how do how do you how do you love and honor yourself more um, on Insight Timer and that's just insighttimer.com slash Julie Riesler or look up my name and uh, on YouTube I'm there as well but I would say home is the is the place julieriesler.com and I love connecting with people like if you want to reach out or you have a question or anything like please let me know reach out to me email me I I love people. That's why I love doing this work. I love being of service. Um, and questions about coaching or any of that, like, please come over and say hi and share. I, you know, I feel like we're all here to uplift one another. I really do. And I believe in that. And there's so much to learn, you know, there's just so many different ways to continue to expand yourself and just learn. It seems endless. Endless. That's going to be the thing is not getting caught up in the rabbit hole of it's endless because it is, but to realize, you know, trusting you're, you're always right where you're meant to be. That that's a big one for me. And, um, I think it makes it fun, you know, like we get to, I don't know what's going to be in a year or two if we're open and we're, we're willing to, to expand ourselves and our consciousness and our energy and to learn, just watch out. Like you, get to hang with you today. Like this is because I followed my intuition to just do what I love and make a difference. And it goes back to that whole follow what lights you up and ask the question, you know, how might this be of service to other people? How might this be something that's going to make an impact? And I think those two together, you, you, you will not be led astray. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I look forward to connecting in real life, which I know we will and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. See you next time.